Welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Bible Study for Sunday, March 3rd, 2018. Today, Pastor Ernie Jung leads us as we continue our study on the Gospel of John. This morning, we focus on John chapter 1, verse 14 to 28. Let's listen in. Why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Dearly Father, we, we thank you for this day, Lord, uh, that you have brought us to this time, Lord. Uh, we're just thankful for uh, the gift of your word, uh, for the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ. Uh, for the obedience of, of, of what your Son had done uh, so that we may have life in your name. Lord, uh, as we continue to see your glory in your word, uh, may this fill us and guide us and lead us as we live out our days in your holy name. May this word continue to root us in the gospel, and uh, may this always be our courage through all things. We thank you, O Lord, for this time together. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're in the Gospel of John. And we just started the Gospel of John, and uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, of course. No, this is not confirmation class, I know. Uh, John 1, 14 to 28, and here we see uh, the continual uh, uh, teaching of who Jesus is and the description of the glory of God. Now, uh, we call that in the group the, the dogza, and we see right here this glory uh, of what this, you know, when we talk about, I do this for the glory of God, right? I don't know if you ever hear that fa- phrase, or the glory of God is always that term that, you know, people kind of use, not as a platitude, but you kind of hear it, uh, we do all things for the glory of God, or, I don't know, if have you ever heard that? Mm-hmm. Like, when you, someone wins a Super Bowl? Um, yeah. <laughs> I do this for the glory of God, or, uh, but what does that mean, right? Like, what does... For the glory of God, mean and I think yes, Marjorie. I think it can mean a couple of things. I think when I hear athletes, like I can remember at the Olympics and stuff, a couple of times some of the athletes have said something like that, and I think of two things that they're trying to point out that it's not their own ability, that it's, and that also that they're doing it to promote the glory of God in the sense of promote his name and, and that it's not about them. Right. It's about God. Yep. Good. Great. Good. I always, I always thought in football that meant the winning team had a better chaplain than the losing team. <laughs> oh, or it could be that. But anyways, um, we look at verse 14 and we see what that glory is. Now again, when we say I do this for the glory of God, we need to ask what is God's glory? Like what is that glory? How does he show us his glory? And it says right there in verse Uh, 14 okay it says and the word became flesh and dwelt again last week we talked about what does dwell mean it means tabernacled with us remember tabernacle is old testament right with uh, the sacrifices uh, for the forgiveness of their sins they would bring the animals and there we see the true tabernacle god himself the true temple uh, come to be uh, dwelling with them or tabernacling with them and we have seen his glory Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. All right? So this glory of God is full of grace and truth. From the Son of the Father. So, when we talk about the glory of God, and uh, His grace and truth, what is Jesus uh, bringing into the world? When we talk about full of grace and truth, what is, and God's glory, how does that, uh, what is grace and truth? Grace is forgiveness for things that you don't deserve to be forgiven for. So undeserved, right? Yeah. Undeserved forgiveness. And, tr- um, and truth, it's, it's the way, it's the, it's Truth. It's real. Is it truth. So when we talk about truth... It's an absolute. Uh, it's an absolute. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, uh, do we live in a world that likes absolutes? No. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> Unless you're an accountant. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have to remind me of my test, Marjorie. That's been another gnawing thing on my heart, too. My sister can help you. Oh. Uh, anyways. <laughs> but truth, it's absolute. Now, when we talk about... Uh, the glory of God right there it says uh, full right complete 
Now, what, what, why is this very important to understand? When we talk about full grace and full truth, uh, and we talk about how this glory of God is manifested through the sending of his Son, what does this tell us about God and his love for us? About That it's complete. It's complete. That uh, grace upon grace, as we talk about soon, that this is no, um, this is no uh, coincidence that uh, John uses those words grace upon grace because, again, it is, it is really emphasizing the fullness that God brings through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about fullness, you guys, I know I had a question on there that I took off because I just felt like it. But maybe I should have kept it on. But when we talk about fullness, you guys, uh, do you believe that Jesus, well by his glory, brings you that fullness. It's something that we always have to ask ourselves, because I think at times, we might say, well, maybe 90%, but I need that 10 extra percent of my own. Or maybe, we might not say it that way, we don't. We never talk like that out loud. But you might say, I know the gospel. I know that Jesus says it is finished, and he forgives me of all my sins. But yet, what does the devil do? Makes you think that you, is that really true? How can that be true? You need to do something. Mm -hmm. You need to be a part of this. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah. No. Oh, puts that's doubt. right. That's Someone right. puts doubt in your mind. Can that be true? That's right. Always tempting. Uh, full of grace and truth. We very well know that, yes, you're right. Uh, is there, isn't there a catch? Don't, don't we have to play a part? But when we talk about full, full undeserved forgiveness, full truth, that is, there's no half-truths or gray areas. This is the truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. But also, I think, uh, Jesus gives me fulfillment, but yet I seek my own idols to really give me that fulfillment. Now, again, we don't say it like that in our hearts and minds. But whatever that, uh, that is that you are captivated by, uh, that is probably your little God in your life. So I, I got to be a better person. So when I get to heaven, my my house will have a pool. Oh, just a pool? Anyways, uh, um, it's funny when you're near water and it's like that Disneyland syndrome. You know, you live close to Disneyland, but you never go. When you're close to water, you think it's great, but then you never, you rarely go. Anyways, but that's so so true. You know, when we talk about uh, full of grace and truth, this is the glory of God, and that is. Really, the, the, it's manifested through the sending of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus gives to us, grace and truth in all of its fullness. Now, if there's something more that we need from, apart from this, we really have, well, the devil is always tempting us. Right? And I think for our, uh, as we live in this country, um, even for our kids, you know, I think it's... Uh, um, I know some of you are, some of the kids are college bound, right? Or going to be college bound, or they're, they're getting older, and it's easy for them to put all their eggs in that basket of what college am I going to? And, and basically, this is the make or break of my whole entire life, right? <laughs> but isn't that so true? Like, we do that too, not like college kids, but we can put our fulfillment in certain things in life as if that is everything, when in fact, all me, mom, it is the word of God, the gospel. That has set us free. Right? That has forgiven us of our sins. That has given us life eternal. Right? This is true because His truth is absolute. There is not many ways to be with God, but there is only one way, and that is Jesus Christ. Full. Right? Not half tank, not quarter tank, uh, not unleaded or 92 or 90. I use 87. So. Is there 87? 89, 89, right? 89, 91, 92. It's, it's full, unleaded. It's, it's complete. It's perfect. Jesus' work, who he is, this is what he embodies, grace and truth. Now, if we need something apart from that again, we have really, uh, well, we, got, we have to repent and seek the Lord's forgiveness because we know what Jesus has brought to the table. So you look at your notes right here. Uh, if you see John 12, 23, um, as we talk, the glory of God is centered on the death and resurrection of Christ. That is the glory of God, as it reads. Well, I guess we'll turn to it, um, because I wrote down there. Um, that must be last week's paper or something. Is that on, are we on last week's paper? No. No? no. He's just skipping around. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, you know me, Marjorie. Yes, that's right. So, 
So we see right here, John 12, 23, it reads, if someone could read that real quick, it's a short one. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. All right. The, the hour has come, right, for the Son of Man to be glorified, and that is to be lifted up high on the tree. This is when we talk about the glory of the Lord uh, from the Father. As we see on your handout, the Son is divine, perfect, and obedient to the Father's will. Jesus thirsted, cried, hungered, as he took upon human flesh to become sin for us. And as we sung that uh, hymn this mor- or that praise song this morning, um, I think uh, in the beginning about uh, becoming sin for us, we see that in 2 Corinthians 5, he who knew no sin um, became sin for us. That this is, because of Christ, full of grace and truth. Right? Um, he is truthful. 1 Peter 2 reads, he committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. Jesus is the truth. He is not a liar. He is not a sinner. But he is the one who delivers what he promises. There is no deceit in his mouth because he is God. It's because of his truth that we are set free by his grace. If God is a liar, if Jesus is sinful, then none of this would be true. There would be uh, no truth in Christ's name. But there, because Jesus, as it says right there in 1 Peter 2, no deceit. Isaiah 53, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Very similar. Right? Isaiah 53, verse 9b. So, again, when we talk about Jesus as the truth, he is full. And because he is the truth, uh, he sets you free. And by his body and blood shed upon the cross. Just like today in the, the, the gospel text of destroy this temple and in three days I will rise. Right? Or it will be raised. And that is the truth. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead third day, what would happen to his words? They wouldn't be truthful. Truthful, right? <laughs> uh, they would be false. He'd be lying. If Jesus, if they saw the dead body Jesus and said, oh, wait, I thought he was going to, wait, let's, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, day 10. Maybe he just meant another type of scale of days. Maybe it meant it's day 14 and we still... No, this, our whole promise of God in the gospel would be uh, futile. It would be useless, as St. Paul would say. Um, and this is so true, as we see right here. So, again, um, when we talk about verse 14, it says, This is who Jesus is. He dwelt among us. That we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, that this glory is coming to them in the flesh. That this Messiah, this Redeemer, this Jesus, uh, would be the one who would save people from their sins. The glory of God. This is who God is, given to them in the form of a man, Jesus Christ. Right? Um, and this Jesus is full, indeed, of grace and truth. Yes, Rob. So if Jesus isn't uh, exactly who he says he is, if he wasn't raised from the dead, there's no substantive difference in the scripture um, from the sermon today. Uh, yeah. The house is built on the, on the um, solid rock. Yeah. And the uh, um, story of the three little pigs. One, ha- one house is hard to blow down, the other two are um, easy to knock down. Yeah, I should have used that better. I think they, I don't know. After last week's Barney thing, I don't even know if they know Three Little Pigs anymore. So. Maybe you ought to ask Elliot to do a dry run of the children's yeah. message. I, they always ask me a day before what it is, and sometimes I go, oh, yeah, that'll, that sounds interesting, or what does that mean? But I didn't ask him. I, last week we talked about Barney and the kids. Who's uh-huh. that? I'm like, yeah. It surprised me about Legos. I would have thought. Oh, no that's one. because they're all on electronics now. I know. Yeah. 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 Well, I was going to say we should have had Pastor Hiller's kids here. The two boys, you know, they're stepping on Legos in the yeah. middle of the yeah. night. <laughs> yes. Legos cut you. You know that when you step on them? Mm-hmm. No. Oh, that's the worst. They, Ouch. You bleed. I have two boys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh. I know. Right? <laughs> and then when you build it, it's like it's so great. And then they drop it and those, those three them. hours of building it for them. They, oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, Carrie, yes. Question might be a little tangent, but regarding the the um, the temple today, and I was always under. I thought Jesus was mad that they were selling items in the temple, that they were like trying making yes. profit, and I always thought that that was the main thing. But today, I I got this 
I got from you that it's because it's not needed anymore. It's not needed anymore because here he is the Lamb of God. It's, was it, it both? It, is it, it definitely is both, but I think the thrust of the sermon today was more of just the Jews not understanding why he was there to do those things mm -hmm. in a sense of, uh, you, you, again, uh, it, when we talk about the marketplace and them selling, you know, the temple was kind of the owner of that. So they were, you, they were kind of profiting from that in itself. And Jesus, well, since he's there, he's basically saying, but this, in the past, that was an acceptable thing to do. This wasn't a one-time event. That no, no, accepted. definitely. It was, a, it was definitely something that they did because a lot of the people, they would travel from far places right. and uh, uh, carrying an animal on that pilgrimage would have been very difficult. But they so. should have been providing those things outside of the temple. Yeah, elsewhere. yeah, I think that too. And in the temple courts, in the Father's house, that shouldn't be done. Um, but I think even in that, when we see the we see what he was doing with the whip of cords. I mean, he was definitely not saying like, now, now, could you please <laughs> depart from the premises <laughs> in two minutes? No, he, wasn't it he also, shoot him out. Wasn't it also though that they were like charging exorbitant rates? It wasn't just <clears throat> that it was a, a, here, you know, you, you need two pennies for this. It was like 200 pennies as opposed to so yeah, that, that, they were profiting as well as. You know, one of the other gospel readings says I, in the synoptics, say that uh, Jesus says, "You have turned my father's house into a, a house a den of thieves." Right. So they were cheating the people. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Jesus had it. Jesus had any problems with them providing a convenience for the people. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so definitely, you know, when we talk about uh, uh, just Jesus being there, I think you know when you're when you know that you're the the sacrifice, and you see people. He's pretty much putting down his foot, saying, no, no longer is this needed. I'm here. And uh, even if um, that den of thieves, whatever they were doing, and again, I, I think on one, one level, uh, they were providing an animal for sacrifice, which is, you know, what they were called to do. Uh, but yet at another, uh, now the time has come, the salvation is near, where all this was pointing to the coming Savior, the sacrifice, uh, the sacrificial lamb in Jesus Christ. So... Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Doesn't it also show that we haven't come very far? Because if you think back to what Luther encountered when he went to Rome. Yeah. With the uh, indulgences. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, you know, even, you know, even this day, even in the Christian church, and I'm not going to, yeah, sorry, oh, man, already? So we see, um, <laughs> you know, even the, the great temptation for a Christian church even is to become very attractive or... Oh, we have, we have this. It's almost like uh, there's seminars where you can grow a church, but when it's not on the simple word of God and the sacraments, and it's about these other details, uh, church growth can become, well, it can become very lopsided. And I had, I had an online friend who wrote a um, satire article for the Wittenberg Door magazine that was a satire of the purpose-filled church. He called it the purpose-filled church. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. What? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it, like a fish. So, you know, I, I think it's it's important that we always center on uh, our the word of Christ because we know that's where we have the rock. That's what the that's what we are proclaiming because we know that saves. And that's the key. You know, until the end of time as a church here at Faith More Park uh, 9302-1123 Park Lane. Uh, <laughs> you can always come and enjoy the word in sacrament. But, uh, uh, Fort Park, California. Yes, yes. Uh, that's what we preach, Christ crucified, because we very well know that that is all there is, and that is what gives life, and that's why we come. Right? Uh, so, because of, we're getting back on the road, because of the glory of God, right? So, uh, verse 15, if someone could read that, John 1, 15. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. All right, so good. Verse 15, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. Now, again, as a forerunner, you look at your notes, John makes known that all his work pointed to the coming Christ. John's witness pointed to the superiority and also the authority of Christ because he was before me. Not just before me, like... You know, we, we know the story, right? Uh, John was weeping in the womb. Uh, Mary was there. And uh, yeah, we, we know that. But, but what he's talking about is before me as in the beginning. Right? 
Because he is God. Right? That he was, well, in the creation. That he uh, was there with the Holy Spirit, with the Father, uh, creating all things. That he is the Alpha and Omega, first and the last. He is there before even the beginning. And this is who God is. And therefore, uh, when we talk about grace and truth, John is not worthy even of um, untying his sandal. Right? And that is uh, John's understanding of what he came to do. That he is the forerunner. That he is there to call people to repentance and prepare the way of the Lord. Um, I think people should be aware of just how impactful that statement was coming from John to his Jewish audience. The, yeah, the yeah. Jews, for the most part, believe that there, there's a there's a scripture that tends to imply that Elijah's going to have a, a Elijah's going to come back, and Jews were very strong on that. Uh, because Elijah was—he was, he never died. He—he he was taken he up in the Passover dinner. They leave, a, they leave an open chair at the table for Elijah. It's they were the Elijah chair. So it's uh, you know they, they had this anticipation, and, and we see right here, and we'll talk about that soon. But uh, it says right here in verse sixteen, and from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, right? So from his fullness we have received grace upon grace, Christ. Grace upon grace, the, the, the complete repetitive uh, emphasis of, yeah, you have the grace of God, but this is a grace upon grace, that this forgiveness that you have is true, right? That you have been delivered uh, the forgiveness of sins, that you are set free, and that you have life eternal. This is very important to remember as we talk about what Christ brings in his fullness. John cannot bring that fullness, right? John is the forerunner who was... Uh, set to prepare the grace upon grace, but it's only Jesus Christ who uh, prepares the, who is that way in a sense where he actually does deliver. When John can't be Jesus because well he was born of the flesh, right? And he was born um, of uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, and there uh, uh, he was called to be that forerunner. So again, preparing the way for the authority and superiority of Christ, who is the fullness that he brings. Grace upon grace, and therefore, um, um, just like, um, I don't know if you ever watched Wayne's World. <laughs> Wayne's World! I know, I thought it was such a weird thing, right? Uh, we're not worthy. And then John, uh, John said, uh, I, I used to, I think I saw that in, in middle school, right? The Times, like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, anyone remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So, uh, uh, but it's, it's so true. John very well knew his place. And that's a fair, yes. Would it be fair, and this might be a tangent also, would, it, would be. it be fair to say then that John was probably the first true believer? Because I'm thinking about the fact that even in the Old Testament, whether it would be Solomon or David, I mean, they all believed, but they all uh, failed and, and at some point in time. And even Peter believed, and yet he failed. But... Unless I just don't know it. I don't remember ever hearing anything about John. It's like he was committed from the time he was in the womb and, and never strayed from that belief. Yeah, I, I, the Bible doesn't talk about uh, what your question is, but we always know that John is the last of the prophets in a sense of all the Old Testament prophets, and now John was here, and he was kind of the last of them. Uh, but that's kind of all we can assume I can't go further than that because the Bible doesn't say but yeah I mean John was faithful you know he was a faithful foreigner who well, I think at the end of the day knew his position that he wasn't there to be the star so, so like this John even John struggled a little, little with his faith when he was in prison and he sent his disciples out to ask Jesus uh, who is this are, 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 are you who well, we can get blind and um, yeah, so again, you know, when we talk about John, he knew his position, and uh, that is uh, to prepare the way. So this is very important, because when we talk about preparation, uh, he prepared for the full of grace and truth. So we see right here in verse 16, uh, Through the gospel we have received the unmerited gift without any doing of our own. Grace upon grace shows the fullness of God and his love for humanity. This is our God. Remember that. We need his grace, because... Uh, Nancy or Ruth or, or Janelle or Christy, we, we can't, oh, or everyone else here. <laughs> but uh, no, we, we can't, again, we, we, can't, we can't elevate ourselves to God. 
we're dead. We're, we're the Walking Dead. I've never seen that TV show. But, uh, I know Rob. Sunday night, nice. six o'clock. I, I know. I, I don't watch. Uh, you usually watch Barney. <laughs> so, Even though they don't uh, watch. But, uh, uh, but uh, the point is, is that uh, uh, what were we saying? Oh, about um, Grace. Grace. As Walking Dead is where. Yes. We're oh, walking, oh, yes. We are the Walking Dead. And, uh, well, that's kind of religious. <laughs> I know. I know. It's easy to think that uh, we can uh, bring this fullness to ourselves, and that's the deception of man. You guys, this is we talk about Jesus as our faith. Uh, if there's any other ounce of ourselves that believes we can merit our way to God, we need to go back to the gospel. Because if we have any ounce there that says, well, I'm not so bad, and God is, well, I'm good, uh, we're, we're really forgetting the cross and what he has done. Full. Or full. Not halfway or kind of like grace. But Jesus is full of grace and truth. Grace upon grace. Complete work of Christ. That is why we cling to him, because we very well know that we fall short. But Christ doesn't. He is the rock. Because he is the grace upon grace. The complete, full circle. A word, promise, delivered. Jesus, body and blood. Death and resurrection. Right? Ascension, and even return. This is all part of his word and his promise. And that is why we cling to him. Just as John did the same thing. Right? He knew why he left in the womb. He knew why. Because uh, Jesus was there too, and He was so joyous, and likewise too. Here, He knew what Jesus came to do. In John one twenty nine, what does He say? We haven't gone there yet, but He says, "Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world." Right. So John very well knew what He was preparing for, and that is uh, the true sacrifice. The Lamb of God. Yes. In Psalm twenty three, when it says, "My cup runneth over," isn't that kind of what it's referring to? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Yes, and I will surely live um, in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, forever, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's that's what fullness is. And you, we always have to ask ourselves, because we're human here, right? We are. Most of us. Okay, all right. Uh, I know the only alien I've ever seen was Elf. Remember him? Elf. Elf. Oh, E.T. Oh, that is so, I know, I'm so sorry. We're up and we're Oh, man. We're up and we're up Elf was the one, right? <laughs> According to John Green, were all aliens you know, oh. from Mars, women are from Venus? No, I know. I was Last night I was watching, I was reading about Heaven's Gate. Remember that? Oh, 1986 yeah. in San Diego. About the cult, about aliens. Oh, not it was the so, movie. No, the, the, the cult. The cult. But anyways, uh, the point is, is that uh, when we talk about, um, I forgot. Where we're I all was. humans here. We're all humans here. Honestly, you need to be here every week. Chris, you need to be here every week. I'm carrying off the rails. And then you, you could He's a rabbit. Uh, so, uh, but this, it's so true. You know, when we, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, what this means uh, about the truth, that we are the walking dead, but yet Jesus is the one who stands up for us, who stands in our place because he is full of grace and truth. This is what the world was waiting for, and John knew it. Right? And John knew what Jesus would bring. And this is, um, again, very important to remember about your faith, because um, if there is any ounce of doubt uh, or you bring, that you need to bring something to the table, then we're really not adhering to what God is saying in his word. Right? That's why we're Christian, uh, because of what God has done completely. Right? Word, sacrament, all of it is done for you. Serving you with the body and blood of Jesus in the communion, uh, giving you uh, uh, the water and word by the power of the Holy Spirit, calling you by name right in that water and word, not by the decision or choice of your own, but all by the grace of God. This is all of God's work, right? Grace upon grace. Jesus coming down a man, that's not because you fulfilled some type of level of requirement and then he came. No, he came because we can't fulfill anything, right? So we, we talk about God's work in his gospel. This is what it's talking about, the fullness that he brings because no one else has fullness. Um, and we can't. We can't whip that up ourselves. Right? So, um, okay, uh, verses 17 and 18. 17 and 18, if someone could read that. <clears throat> For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. All right. So, um, Moses, you know, what did Moses see in God when he was with God? Did he see his face? No. No. No, no he saw his... Um... <laughs> Backside. <laughs> According to Madeline Muriel, hair got moon Moses. Yes, well, I don't think he... 
not in that way, not in that crude way, but uh, definitely he saw his backside to save him, right? He, if he saw his face, he would uh, be destroyed. And uh, clearly when we talk about Moses bringing the law, now why is the law good? Anyone? The law is good, right? Mm-hmm. What's well, a guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It knows, it shows us how to live. Is this in check? Romans chapter 7. If the law didn't say, did, no, did, did right. not covet, I wouldn't know not to covet. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's good, right? As it says right there in Romans 7 mm-hmm. on your handout. Uh, that the law shows us what is good, what is right, what God was calling the Israelites to do in their journey. Without a set of rules or laws, uh, I mean, they already messed up anyway. <laughs> but uh, it was good for them to know what they ought to do in this, in this people as Israel, right? This is what they were given. And yet, uh, we very well know uh, that uh, Moses... He came down and saw them doing what? Worshipping a golden calf. He got angry. He broke the tablets and he went back up again to give them a pair. And then he came back down. And uh, we very well know uh, that by these laws, uh, they were to be led. And how quickly they fell short. Now, the fulfillment of all this is uh, Jesus who came not to abolish the law, right? But to fulfill it, right? And that's, that's very important. Uh, he came to fulfill the law, the law that we we cannot fulfill ourselves. Now, are, is it good that we fulfill or live by the law? Of course. You know, if I want to know, I always tell my children, you know, Abe, Zoe, you know, God says to love one another. Why are you fighting? Because he's done. Yes, I know. That's right. And uh, they both are always like, I always watch carefully. And Zoe's always the quick one who does a little thing that no one sees and then Abe reacts and he's like, it wasn't my fault, you know, and I'm like, you know, I, I saw So she's looking at me. <laughs> but, uh, oh, my daughter, she's a, um, she's just like me. I've got to pray for her. So, uh, <laughs> could be really straight for her. Like me. So, uh, uh, but, but the law is a good purpose, as it says in Romans 7, as Rob said. Yet it was Jesus, full of grace and truth, that was sent by the merciful Father to save sinners. No one has ever seen God. Again, not even Moses could see God face to face. Only the one Jesus Christ who descended and ascended bears the witness to the truth of the gospel. So when we talk about the, 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 the witness of truth, not even Moses, the great prophet of the Old Testament, could see the Lord face to face, but there Jesus is, who is God, who is full of truth. And this is something to remember when we talk about who Jesus is. Uh, people in this world will tell you, Jesus is not God. They'll say it. Right? I mean, every other religion says, Oh, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe he's God. Some believe that he's created after the fact. Uh, some believe that he's just a good example. Right? Good role model. Benevolent. Even Gandhi man. thought he was a great philosopher. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. You know, if we're not... If he's a great philosopher, what do we hear in our text today about the philosophies of man in the in First Corinthians? We heard that that's all foolish, right? It says in Proverbs 26, uh, uh, the dog, uh, the foolish... Is like a dog who vomits and goes back to eat his own vomit, right? I saw a crow. I saw the crow do that the other day. It was pretty uh, disturbing. But that's the truth, you know. When we talk about the wisdom of man, uh, we fall short. But there, uh, but there, uh, Jesus is to show us who He is as the truth. Right. This is um, very important to remember: the law and the gospel. Without the gospel, where would we be? We would be like every other world religion that is trying to to um work their way to heaven. Climb the <laughs> climb the ladder to salvation, right? Sorry, was that a good? I'm not good with charades, but that's my um, or it could be a rock wall. I don't know. But uh, we could. Uh, they're climbing there, and when you ask them, how do you know? They say, well, I hope so. We'll see when we get there. See, but for us, we know. We know. If I die, I'm with God because I'm forgiven of my sins through Jesus Christ. Because of this full of grace and truth. This, again, this is so important because if it's God's action on behalf of man, we know that that is why he speaks of grace and truth. God's action on behalf of man. Um, but if we don't see this grace and truth, then it's act, man's action for the sake of their salvation. And we see how far that goes. This is the point where faith comes into the equation. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Yes, yes. Very good. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to uh, to have faith. 
Yes. Awakens us. Yes. Enlightens our hearts uh, to see the truth. The work of the Holy Spirit, John 16, John 14, you know, uh, concerning sin, concerning... We just did this on Friday, or Thursday, in our video series that we're doing online. But uh, concerning uh, sin, concerning righteousness, concerning judgment. That's the Holy Spirit's work, to illumine our hearts, to see the truth that is in the gospel, right? And, uh, and the law, of course, law and gospel. But uh, uh, here we see, uh, when we talk about Jesus, he is described as one of full grace and truth. Um, so important to remember, as this is uh, the end-all, be-all for us. Um, and that is why in every sermon you always hear about that, the law and the gospel. As we continue here, uh, 19 to 23, if someone could read uh, uh, four verses for me. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied the words of Isaiah the prophet. I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. All right, so right there, we see uh, in verse 19, we see that uh, there, John is asked, who are you, right? Um, I am not the Christ. Now, again, what does Christ mean? The anointed one, right? Uh, the anointed one set apart, uh, who is God, who is holy, who is blameless, who is perfect. The one who is set apart uh, to do that very thing that God has called him to do, that is to die for the sins of the world. So Jesus or John is not that person that was set apart to die for the sins of the world, the anointed one, the chosen one to do that very thing. Um, he is not Elijah either. Now, these are uh, Elijah was someone that uh, they were waiting for. We know that in the Bible that Elijah never, uh, uh, per se, he never died, right? He was taken up. Um, and we don't know all too much after that. But what we do know is that they were always waiting for him to return, even to be the forerunner of Christ. So they weren't quite sure what was to happen with Elijah and again, uh, what do we see at the Transfiguration? Who's there at the party? Elijah, Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, we very well know that, yes, he is with God, but also Moses is with God as well. Uh, but we know that John isn't that Elijah. John is the forerunner. And um, his job was to do what? I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now, this is a prophecy fulfilled in Isaiah 40, verse 3. Um, that he has come, that this forerunner would come to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, how does he prepare them? Uh, through the calling out in the wilderness with those words of repentance. That's why during the season of Lent, it's really a penitential time, a time of preparation as we uh, begin our way again uh, to, uh, to Holy Week and Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, um, Easter Sunday. Uh, the the, the, the remembering of what God has done for us in His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is uh, that preparation to know that we have fallen short of our glory, to the glory of God, and through His grace and truth, we are set free. Constant, you guys. This is the life of a Christian. Always a life of repentance and forgiveness. This is the constant as we continue to uh, live in His grace and truth, the gospel. So John, again, uh, is really refuting all these, all these thoughts. Are you the, pro the prophet, right? No, I'm not. Right? Who are you? We need to give an answer. The Pharisees sent him. So we, we need an answer uh, to, to give back to the, uh, the Pharisees. And again, make straight the way of the Lord as a prophet Isaiah said. All right, so that is what John uh, was called to do. All right, I think we'll finish it today. Why not? Mm -hmm. Right, we've got two minutes, three minutes. Uh, why don't we go uh, 24 to 28, if someone could uh, read that for me. I can do it again. Now then, some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the, throng, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. 
This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. All right, so in conclusion today, we look on our hand on the back side. It says, uh, uh, I baptize you with water. John's baptism was preparatory in nature. Right? He prepared the way of the Lord through a baptism of repentance that pointed to the coming one, Jesus Christ, the strap of whose sandal I am unworthy to untie. So the key point here is that, yeah, John uh, baptized in the wilderness. Uh, he was preparing the hearts, that call of repentance. Right? He was preparing their hearts for what was to come. Because we very well know when we talk about baptism and let's say, you know, and I always, I always wrestle with this too, I think, honestly, with Christian baptism and John's baptism. I'm always wrestling with that. Uh, because when we talk about Christian baptism, we know that is uh, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, which poured out later after Jesus' ascension as he gave the Holy Spirit. But when we look at John's baptism, it really was a time of, preparation, a time of repentance as they were preparing for the fulfillment that is Jesus Christ, right? So it, it was that, uh, and that's all we really can really go with in a sense of uh, whether we talk about Christian baptism, which we have today, which is different, you know, it's different in a sense where uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we, are, we are called by the water and word, by the power and the grace of God, uh, robed in his righteousness. Um, and there uh, we are rescued from sin, death, and the power of the devil, all by the death and resurrection of Christ. Right? Romans 6, connected to his death, connected to his resurrection and baptism. So when we talk about uh, John, I think the key point here is his, prepar his preparation for the people. And that included that baptism for repent uh, of repentance, so that, that it, they may be ready for the coming king that is Jesus Christ, right? the forerunner. Um, always John is shifting the focus away from himself in order for Christ to increase I must decrease and he's always preparing the people for the way not his way but Jesus as the way the truth and the life um, how was it guys? good good, good. good. alright very good very good uh, well um, isn't that what God said? My name is good yes <laughs> Why don't we um, why don't we close, and uh, yeah, so great to see the kids here. Uh, why don't we close, and um, we'll continue next week. If you have any questions on this, uh, we'll we'll start that next week. But uh, why don't we close, and then with the word of prayer right here. Uh, let us pray. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, O Lord, that you have brought us this time, Lord. We know that through your glory, full of grace and truth, you have brought us to be your own, Lord. We know that. Uh, because of our sin, uh, we need your love and grace and your forgiveness. Uh, bless our hearts to cling to this promise, to know full well that uh, we have been rescued from um, sin, death, and the power of the devil, and that you have brought us to your eternal light. Thank you for Jesus, for the rock of our salvation. Uh, thank you for the comfort knowing full well that um, you have forgiven us, and that you have given us the keys to eternal life. Bless our church, uh, bless our members, and and continue to lead all of us in your light. And we thank you, O oh Lord. We pray all, um, pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everyone, have a good week. Thank Thanks for listening to this Bible study presentation from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.